Welcome to Behind the Scenes, Episode Twelve. I'm Goldie, West Coast host, and uh, we're here to present a nice show tonight and uh, most interesting. And uh, <clears throat> what's up with the DJ? Man, it's hey man, it's it's about Black Lives Matter, man, and uh, in trying to understand some of these issues that uh, people are bringing up and understanding their demands. And the way I interpret it is that it really is an interpretation of taxation with no representation. Uh, because uh, here it is, we got some people who is uh, employed by the taxpayers you know, practicing racism and breaking the law while doing it. And that's, we are not in agreement with that. So now they hear from the public and Black Lives Matter and other organizations, letting them know that this doesn't represent us. And my thing is racism is ridiculous because we are a consumer economy. Well, the thing it is, you got tax works for it works for the privileged people. It don't work for us, okay? So basically, that's that's the problem right there. It, that's we not we not getting equality, and that's what this issue is about. It is equality, and um, you know, uh, and justice. Um, that's that's what we we not getting that in every respect, you know. So. Um, yeah, taxation, you know what I'm saying? We, we still, we deal with it, but we deal with it in a suppression way. Yeah, you know? well, I, you know, that's why I'm saying, okay, now this, uh, racism is ridiculous. And uh, and I'm, I'm in a community, well, well, if I had a demand, my demand would be simply this, you know, here I am, a uh, black man trying to be a, uh, a contributor to uh, media in the forms of uh, film and music. And all I'm asking, which is my demand, is for racism not to get in my way. And so as as I start where I'm at today, you know, hopefully it'll continue to expand. And then we won't, we won't have uh, so many complaints at the Oscar because I think it begins with the author and the production of films and, the, and whether or not we can secure the budgets to do nice productions that will go on regular television and motion picture that we're watching our films and drive-ins are coming back. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah, well, <clears throat> That's, I, I agree with you on that part. And, um, you know, so that's 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 just uh, one of the issues that, um, you know, the protesters are dealing with too. I mean, Black Lives Matter covers all levels of racism that we've been subjected to, but it also, you know, saying just the racism in itself affects the whole world because most everybody that's outside our race, you know, have a racist mentality because that's what's perpetrated down from the time of slavery. You know, saying it's been in existence and we've been fighting against it and, you know, what I'm saying trying to get it eradicated. And I think now, today, in this day and time, you know what I'm saying, everybody is just fed up. And you know what I'm saying, so a change got to come. And yes. it's, you know, it's, it's demanding, you know, that that change do come. And that's why we got, you know, the young people out there protesting, you know what I'm saying, to uh, having peaceful protests. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying, the, the police, they trying to get an attitude and get mad because they getting hated up on, but they getting hated up on for their own misactions, their 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 own being uh, uh, unprofessionalism. You know what I'm saying? That 
that they they, they uh, bring to the people every time they have a, a confrontation, you know, especially with us. Yeah, I, and I've been seeing some of the videos and and the confrontations there. Uh, of course, those issues are being addressed with many different organizations, and it's not only here in America. I've been seeing cabinets, man, all over the place. You know, Europe, Asia. I'm telling you, uh, people are tired of this racism. Yeah. Yeah, they're tired of poverty and they're tired of racism. And, and that's, that's, see, when I think about what my business is in fuel and music, I don't think about positive. I, I think about uh, wealth when I think about these kind of careers because uh, it's going out to so many people. So that's what we want to try to do. We want to try to be able to entertain the millions and be compensated, you know, for you know the the quality entertainment we bring to the millions. You know, so that's our goal. I mean. So I'm just saying, racism don't need to get in the way because I already have enough problems competing <laughs> in a very tough industry. This, this is no joke industry, man. They talk about the, the problems with the Oscar. You just think about how much it takes for, for that skill in the writing and the craftsmanship that it takes to develop these characters that people fall in love with, man. That's, that's wonderful, wonderful, man. I, you know, and, and that's part of my dream deferred. You know, what, what I got on, on the back burner that needs to be happening. And that is my dream deferred. I mean, I went to college for this stuff, Memphis State University, and went to uh, Bolger Parish Community College to, to learn how to be a better film director. I also, you know, we did the Who's Next TV show. And, and we boosted our potential subscribership up to one million uh, people in the Los Angeles area. They cover from Watts, Los Angeles, Marina Del Rey, all the way up to Hollywood. You know, and that took discipline. Right. And another, well, uh, one, 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 one more thing, one more thing. You see, see, they talk about poor people, right? Here I was, homeless, <laughs> with no job <laughs> and, 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 and I didn't want to steal so I couldn't use that old phrase but but I would beg and sell incense so I was that's how I, I funded everything you know the recording studio up in Hollywood that you own the reason why you, you own the thing is because you made it to the studio up in Hollywood and we did UBU all right so all of this money was borrowed and, and hustled, you know. So, so when I hear people, and I'm swinging incense from Hollywood to Long Beach, when I hear people like Nipsey Hustle talking about one of the people that we respect was the hustle on the street, and the, the hustle on the street was me right on Prince John Slauson slaying, slaying incense. <laughs> Fresh dip. That's right. You know, and so That's I met, right. you know, I had to contact Matt. You just, just imagine trying to get a uh, uh, twenty dollars a, a, a day or uh, twenty five dollars. You got to talk to a hundred people to try or two hundred people to try to get twenty five dollars. Sell twenty five dollars worth of incense. Why? Because everybody don't like incense. You know, so you got to find your customers. You know, same thing that we try to do with our music. And I'm telling you right now. We are finding our customers, and our customers are writing us back. Well, I give your hats off to you know what I'm saying, uh, you know what I'm saying, your abilities to to be strong and to keep striving and struggling through all this racism. You know what I'm saying to to go go from you know what I'm saying uh, homeless to to you know what I'm saying your endeavors that you had to you know what I'm saying deal with to make your money on the streets but you know what i'm saying even you even went you even you know what i'm saying went to college you know what i'm saying and got your credentials there too as well so you know what i'm saying and uh, and all this is good because that that shows you know what i'm saying you know we are of the older generation and you know what i'm saying and we still you know what i'm saying here and we still represent but however you know we we have 
personally experienced all all facets of racism, all facets of of, of the, the politics. You know what I'm saying? And keeping our people in poverty, keeping our people unemployed, keeping our people undereducated and miseducated. And uh, so, you know, to hear that is 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 really cool because, you know, you know, we do have longevity in dealing with this this struggle right here, but. At the, same time, you know what I'm saying, we here to see a new a change come, a, a, a change that's very much necessary to come. Um, the era we've been caught up under from the 60s is uh, Martin Luther King's era, you know what I'm saying, and it, it's, it's, it's a failure, you know what I'm saying, we have not really got no success out of it to the point where uh, racism have been eradicated, you know what I'm saying? It's still here under his system, under the guise of everything he tried to rep represent for peace, you know what I'm saying, to us marching out there and getting dogs set on, getting set on fire, getting sped on, getting beat down in the streets, you know? So, it's, you know, things are really, people are really fed up and it's not just us, not just our race, it's everybody in the world because racism affects everybody. Although those racists, they don't want to see that. They don't yeah. want to look at that. Well, so racism to... is ridiculous, man. <laughs> I, 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 I just want hey man, look, I, I had to do some musical comedy on that, man. I could twist it up in a beat, you know? <laughs> and, and man, let me tell you, boy, that, I mean, we uh, the reason why the CD is not out now is because my distributor advised me of some technical problems and uh, it, it took them three weeks to notify me about the technical problem. And during that time, all this Black Lives Matter came up and then boom, you know, I looked at this technical problem and I said, I can really improve this album. So this album could be a real platinum project, you know, and, and, and when I took racism and ridiculous, I'll tell you, man, I made it. I, I, I made it in such a way where the band could fit in there and, and, and sing with me or, or the audience can even sing with me on this bad boy tape. They, they like the song, you know, they don't like the song, that's the way it goes. But this bad boy is rocking with some trap beat and, and, and I jazzed it up, man. I, I, had, I had to jazz it up. So Black Lives Matter, man, I, I want to show you my musical experience on this because we talked about the 60s. The one thing I want to like to say about the 60s is that from that came many programs for children and women. And Black Lives Matter today is highlighted most by the problem with the black man, you know. And my idea about the black man is, is that, okay, y'all got all the educational system, but once this person get educated, where are they gonna land up for the job? So this is the reason why I'm trying so hard to be a winner in this game of making film and music. And, and, and all, not only that, you wanna know if I got any experience in, in musical comedy or, or issues like this, I would say yes. In 1992, I put out this album right here. It's called More, More Signs, 12 inch album. And this is the reason why I'm gonna I'm have a physical CD made for the band because if it wasn't for uh, me holding on to the physical thing over the years, everything would have been lost. So I'm trying to distribute the, the history to the band, to the participants uh, uh, of this particular project so you can hold on to it for, for keepsakes. So this is 1992. I did a song called Ride the King and Me. <laughs> and guess what? The Streetport Times even wrote about this. Man, I, but I lost that article, you know, but uh, that's a part of Streetport history. So, 
uh, it's been a long time coming and this racism got to end. I've seen the marches here in Streetport, a lot of talk, a lot of demands. And at the same time, I think we have the legal right to move the Confederate statue in front of the Shreveport, uh, the courthouse uh, downtown. That Shreveport. statue's still there? It's still there. I think we have the yeah, legal they right can. to move they, it. They, they, you do, we do have a right for it to be moved. And matter of fact, it's going to be moved. Yeah, well, I, I think, I think uh, the, the court case, it was a court case with the, uh, the daughters of the Confederate and uh you know finally after all in court procedures you know i think street court do have the permission to move that statue legally you know well they definitely they definitely do now for sure i mean you know what i'm saying either either they're gonna do it legally or either it's gonna get thrown out like the rest of them man they have to they already moved some Without, you know what I'm saying, they just moved on the street that they did want the destruction to come down, but uh, it's going, it's going, it's coming down. Well, the whole reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm seeing the, the previous leadership who allowed all this stuff to go on, including the, the, the uh, police brutality, are finally showing up after the whole thing went global, you know, so, you know, now they're on the front line. Okay, they're on the front line because the cameras are available. I'm, you know, that might be part of their motivation, but at the same time, I want to remind them and whoever else is listening, that if we have the legal right to do something, then we should act upon that. I mean, <laughs> You know that that's what we need to do that that symbolism that's what's being done now yeah but i'm just saying but for for that for that i mean this is you know the whole thing about confederacy what the this statue is about what the confederacy is about they lost the war okay but they still got the momentum of of, of their philosophy in a big old statue in front of the courthouse so i mean you know walking in there don't you, don't you feel like justice is not uh, uh, not going to be applied equal uh so it, uh, it is going to be because that's what that's that's what's going on right today and I, and so uh, you ain't got the truth i'm telling you it's coming down man they come down everywhere i mean on, on all levels even at jemima pancakes you know what i'm saying been at jemima for i don't know how many years you know, even over a hundred. I know that off the shelf, and they're gonna change the uh, the picture on that right there. And there's some other things. You know, what I'm saying even in the entertainment industry with the TVs and stuff, the racism that goes on on there. You know, they're making changes. I'm, my thing is the prisoners, the political prisoners. You know, what I'm saying it, it's so much. Uh, prisons is is one of the biggest institutions of racism that exists in California. And I know this for a fact. And I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know what I'm saying? My thing is this, you know, we gotta, we gotta start with the institutions. We gotta get them institutions cleared up too. And the, the prison system, the uh, prison correctional guards, they just as same as the police on the streets. And so this, you know what I'm saying, that's an inside issue, you know what I'm saying, that can't be overlooked, you know, because of, it, it, I'm telling you, it's really bad inside the prison. You know, well, I, I, I can imagine it you know, because, you know, I, I, I don't have much experience in that. But what I would like to say is that, you know, I, you know, one of, one of my other songs, you know, one of the clues in Stop the Violence, when I did the song Stop the Violence, uh, I say, I'm tired of all you dudes dying in the street. In other words, I'm just trying to let them know. I mean, think before you act because you're dying 
And not only that, the rest of you are going to jail. I mean, so we need you brothers out here on the street doing some, some positive things. I hope you can find that. And, uh, you know, that's one reason why I'm, I'm striving to be a successful businessman because I think one way to talk to the adult black men is, is through employment. You know, I mean, a lot of people want jobs, uh, you know, they went to college and graduated from high school or got their GED and, and some skills and stuff, and they still need a place to be employed, especially now since COVID-19. I think we, we need to look at the economy very differently, that some businesses are being shedded and some got to be added because we're still going to well, how about people. How about there being more black owned businesses as is supposed to be have equality and justice in ownership. Okay, we need to own just as the next person, just as a white person is have ownership, we need ownership, especially knowing that there was a time when we was number one, you know what I'm saying, as far as, you know, our, our position in the world, you know what I'm saying, in, in certain uh, places, and that was, you know what I'm saying, taken from us, you know what I'm saying, we was, people was, you know, like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, how they, they bombed the whole city, you know what I'm saying, to get rid of the black people, you know what I'm saying, but we was owning banks, you know what I'm saying, why we, we supposed to, why we can't be owning a bank? Why we can't have our own schools? Why we can't be owners of markets? Owners of business in general is important. That's what's going to build the community. We, we got to be able to spend our money with our own people because we got a gang of money and everybody is trying to live off of our money. So, you know what I'm saying, in order to, to get equality, it's gonna to have to start with business ownership. It's not gonna be about going to school, you know what I'm saying, to get a fake education to where when you do, even if, when you graduate, you're not gonna be able to find employment with these people, okay? Well, so that's that's what I would like to, to highlight on. It's like, boom, you know, you know, the Martin Luther King days, you know, they made certain uh, demands and progress on account of that. And then as that integration uh, came in, so created the competition in between black owned businesses and white owned businesses. And they had more money, better air condition, more floor space, more uh, items. And so that competition there was, was tremendous on our community. That's one reason why uh, so many uh, black businesses are not here today. That was back in the gap, you know, once ex once existed. Now, the way I look at it today is that I'm in a community that may be considered a food desert. But when I look at it, I say it's also a uh, economic desert, you know, for as entrepreneurship is concerned. Right. So right there, I'm saying, I'm, you know, I'm in music and film, so I like to be like Michael Jackson when it comes to those issues. I say, I'm gonna look at the man in the mirror and put a demand on myself for excellence and, and, and good service. And hopefully just that, because I ain't got much else other than some talent, uh -oh, I'm gonna throw that up in there too. So all of that is what I got to work with to try to make a, a nice product. But you gotta understand my product is film and music. These are, are not retail jobs. These are production, manufacturing type jobs. I'm the manufacturer. So, you know, my doors to the public is normally not open so, uh, because I got private work to do. Behind the scenes give me a chance to go public with some of my private uh, structures. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, you know, so yeah, that's um, that's that's what it, that's what it's gonna take. You know what I'm saying? Is is unity of the people and people peaceful protests going on? And you know, it's 
it, the changes is gonna really have to be major, you know, in order for us to be able to, to recognize it and to know that, you know what I'm saying, we really getting somewhere. We really get, you know what I'm saying, making something happen and we get the change that, that, that's very much needed that we striving for. And, um, well, man, we need to, we need to wrap up this Black Lives Matter subject and we just gonna take up a quick little break. And I do believe when we switch over to our CD release, we're still gonna be talking about Black Lives Matter. So, uh, you got you, what you wanna say before we take uh, a little I'm break? Just gonna give a, I'm gonna give a shout out to, to uh, uh, Mini Bike Legacy, our company. What's up, Rich? You know what I'm saying? Plugging. And, uh, you know, I wanna give a, Shout out to uh, all the political prisoners, and I want y'all to know we got you. You know what I'm saying? And y'all part of this struggle too, and you always have been. And uh, also, you know what I'm saying? I want to say, you know, subscribe. You know, to our talk, uh, leave comments, and you know what I'm saying? Join in with us, man. Help us, you know, pump, pump us up. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's up. Before we take our break, I just want to say, leave those comments, you know, because, uh, you know, that's what makes this thing worthwhile, especially when you ain't getting no money, you know. So, you, your comments, positive and negative, no, it, it advise me that we are reaching somebody. Thank you for uh, watching, and we'll be right back on with our conversation. And let me keep it short. Racism is ridiculous. We'll be right back. We're behind the scenes. Two minutes and two seconds. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes. I'm going to be your West Coast host. And um, we today, I mean, we're back from our, our break. <laughs> so we're back on break time. What's up, DJ? Oh, man, it's all good, man. This is episode... Well, we moving right along with the production. Uh, you know, I like to say that we we'll, we would love to keep a schedule of one show every two weeks. However, life presents its challenges, and especially with this COVID nineteen and and uh, the disruption in the community that we we'll see, and in time to take to, you know to speak our piece and of uh, our Black Lives Matter issues addressed. You know, so we have a lot on our plate. But as as it goes on, we're gonna be rocking and rolling again with a brand new release coming up. It's a little bit delayed. I ran into some technical problems, but some technical problems came up with some beautiful beats. And, uh, and that's what we get ready to bring you. Uh, I got my West Coast Fast Track team on the, on the mission on some of these beats. I got Michael Hardy on Congo drums. I got Lee Lee on vocals. And of course, here I am doing my musical comedy on, on a bunch of stuff. And we're gonna be dressing uh, Love, Black Lives Matter, and a whole bunch of other stuff, man. It's a fun album, including this new. Yeah, so we are also be dealing with um, the Platinum Mixtape CD. And um, we have a song on there that I'm really, you know what I'm saying, into and it's called You Be You. And uh, it's a, such a catchy song in the lyrics, you know what I'm saying, that people, you know, once they hear it, they just gonna jump right in on it like that, man. You going in on the same and stuff like that, so. Um, yeah, so man, I'm I'm so tempted to put U B U as the first track on jam. I mean, because the message is so beautiful in that. Because what it is is it's about you know everybody assuming their own identity and allowing the next person to you know be who they are. See, and that's and and right there, I mean, without saying anything about racism, that's a that's sort of a solution. To, to racism, just allow, I mean, just constitutional rights is there for us to be ourselves and go for what we know in America as good citizens. Uh, 
you know. So we're just trying to enjoy the opportunities that's available to us in America, you know. In America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, man, right. uh, uh, and, 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 you know, and, and you know, Black Lives Matter is a problem that's everybody's problem, you know. I mean, no president or leader yet has solved this thing. It's still going on, and we're in a loop. And I'm telling you, we need to get out of that loop and move forward because a lot of businesses are being lost, a lot of lives are being lost, and those who are left to do something, you know, uh, we hope they step up and do what they can to help you know, America continue right along. Well, I don't think we have to do too much hoping on that because, you know what I'm saying, that's Right here today, you know what I'm saying, all over the world, it's a worldwide issue and uh, really everybody is dealing with it, you know what I'm saying, and it's hitting on all levels, so <laughs> you ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm telling you. So, the reason why, uh, you know, I, I got so many conscious lyrics type songs in there, even though I put a little comedy up in it, is because something has happened lately that has never happened before we are reaching we got a young lady that's waiting on this cd to come out we got actually it's two cds okay let me kind of break it down a little bit because the lead cd is the platinum project that's going to all the streaming services even though they don't pay a lot what i'm trying to do is make sure this music is available to as many people as possible and gather some good statistics. That's one reason why I'm going at it this way, all right? Is that this project is definitely gonna go all over the world. Then we have a compilation CD, which is even more exciting <laughs> because that's teamwork. I mean, hey, look, I, when I first started with music, I started, you know, helping people you know, consolidate their team and perfect their team. I, you know, it's sort of like a coach or a manager. That's what, how I came into the day, you know, so I don't know, that still stick with me. It's, it's like one of my favorite little things I like to do is work with people on music projects. So we have the combination, combination you know, collaboration. <laughs> the, Right. Collaboration, all right, including my ghostwriter, all right. My ghostwriter is involved in on this thing, you know, and my West Coast Fast Track team on the West Coast. And Cody, I'm so happy you, you, you up in the mix. And we got Michael Hardy, uh, you know, bringing some cool combo sound, sounds, and eventually we're gonna work in a lot of things with that. Got really uh coming with some vocals <laughs> mac and cheese <laughs> boy mac and cheese. man look all right this is what she she didn't see this big old poster right here right she saw this little bitty business card right here all right she said mm, stop the violence she heard that beat and wham and look that young lady inspired me and look i took that instantaneous spontaneity improvisation into my heart because she just showed me what a groove she had and that's why i, I want to really you know highlight you know that that this lady did sit, take out some time very busy lady I, i'm sure uh she's working and all that and everything like that but she took the time out of her schedule to drop the mac and cheese man and look, all I want to do is be in a position to offer another shot at it and, and let her know that this is your demo to show the world what we can do. I mean, you can do some things on your own, it's all good. But when we get together, we're going to get a group going, man. I'm telling you, that's what I'm about. I'm, I'm, my job is inspiration, motivation, and organization. That's my right. job, man. If I do that, the band gonna rock. Every time, it's gonna rock. I mean, if I do that with myself, that beat's gonna rock. 
That's the way I be looking at it. And people are right with that. Let me tell you, this one young lady, her name is mine. She said, I told her about the album. And she said, I'll be sure to spread the word. The word of mouth is, you know what I'm saying? That's what it takes. So, yeah. Let's just keep pumping that music up, you know what I'm saying? For everybody else to feel the same way. Yeah. You know, you and, know? And, and let me see something. And, and look. I think this is a very exciting album I put out here called Stop Your Violence. Okay, track number 10. Now this bad boy album, the whole album got 20 cuts on it. All right, but track number 10 is No Drunk Drive. I had a half a dozen people writing me, telling me how much they love this song. I had to go back and listen to it again before I finished up this album. I said, okay. If they like something in this thing, you know, I need to try to zero in on that. So, so that it is, those are statistics. That's feedback. That's information. That information is important. I said, okay, what did I do on this thing? Number one, I talked about a social issue, a community issue. Uh, uh, that's universal all across America and probably around the world. People driving drunk. All right, that's not a good idea. I, I drink, but when I drink, I drink responsibly. You know, uh, like have a designated driver, or you know, I don't finish all my traveling for so the day. You do all that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I try. You know, or I drink at home after I finish all of my commuting. Okay. So that's what I do. All right. So, so well, that's I, a good example. That's yeah. what people are supposed to do. And so, as I wrapped up this platinum project, I thought about those comments, and I said, "What did I do on that?" I said, the "Only thing I did was just be myself." So that's what I did for the rest of these hours. Just grab anything I can get my hands on and be myself and rock that beat. That, and that's, I thought, that's it. I mean, you know, because this, I, I figured it is going to be hard for people to listen to a song about no drunk driving. So I said, man, this, I got to get a groove. So, you know, that's where I went at every single song on this album. But on, on the tail end, I sunk in even deeper. Why? Because of the feedback of people writing me and telling me how much they love my music and they are waiting for my next album. That never happened to me before and I'm telling you, if, that, if anything is a blessing, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. That ain't even money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's not money. You know, that's inspiration. And hopefully that inspiration turns into something that's, beautiful that's that people power, like. That's the power of inspiration. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, working, it's working for you, but that's all good. And I think that's what we need to apply to Black Lives Matter. Because if we have a food desert or economic desert where there's not a lot of black businesses, we need to change our mindset and say, okay, I'm gonna be looking at myself in the mirror, like Michael Jackson said. Like the man in the mirror. What can the man in the mirror do? You know, or what talents that I have that might be marketable in my community. And let me find out whether or not my community want me to do it. And then going into business, you're gonna have to get okay from the city anyway. So, you know, so, that, so that's what I'm saying. You have to do your homework, do your research, be diligent and, and, and uh, I don't know if you can uh, uh, adopt my thrifty spinning habits, but that would be advisable if you starting in business and you know really keep your eye on your budget. Well, you know, basically that's the only way you know once you do get your business up and running is is, is to be successful. You gotta watch that money. You know what I'm saying? Make sure your money is going right and it's going out and it's coming back in. You know what I'm saying? Prosper. And so, 
Oh yeah, man, we got people writing us about everything. And, and, and before we wrap this show, because you know I felt like we are going to have to have more shows on Black Lives Matter. And one of my uh, subscribers, I <laughs> thank you for subscribing and leaving a comment. Ask me, what do I be drinking? Well, today I'm drinking water. So I'm answering the question before the show ends. <laughs> so I don't have to write you back on that. <laughs> you know, today I'm drinking water. And if you think, I, man, I, I just try to feel joy all the time. I'm, it's, look, it's my daily habit to try to have something to, to laugh about or, you know, have my own personal jokes. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? to myself, you know, to, to inspire me to go on with the serious challenges of life, you know. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. on Easter, <laughs> my Easter present was the tree falling down. <laughs> I had to do a show on that. I mean, that's real stuff, man. So sometimes, you know, real stuff happens, man. And look here, you know, man, when it's a big tree, you have to pay attention. All right, <laughs> it is a big well, job. you got it cleaned up. No, it ain't, it, we, got it, we got it partially done. You know, I'm, I'm slowed up by uh, uh, covert 19 to slow down production of uh, vital services in this uh, neighborhood. I, you know, I hate to stress the people by keeping on top calling them back, you know, asking what can they do. You understand what I'm saying? But. You know, we never know what the future may lay uh, in front of us. And hopefully, it, what lays in front of us is one million downloads. <laughs> and that tree could be taken care of very easily with something like that. You know, clean up all the yeah. rubble and all the dirt and beautify the whole area. You know, make it artistic as my mind can create. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, so that's what I'm saying. You know, when I thought about the, the film project of making the band, I, I I thought about being a fiscal conservationist to be able to handle this over a course of years. So I had to spread it out over years. That allowed me time to develop the team, to to have a lot of pre-production activity going on, to record the music and to try to find out where the actors want to come in, what can they do, and what do they want to do, so the role will fit them properly, you know, for the movie, the making of the band. Now, that's a one-year project. We're, we're only, we're, well, approximately eight months in, seven, eight months in. So, but we behind schedule because of COVID-19. I'm telling you because, I'm in a high risk group, and so I'm, I'm being extra cautious and uh, sheltering in. There's no problem for me. That's part of my job. Well, okay then. <clears throat> well, I'm trying to make it happen. You know, uh, we're trying to do our part, and um, you know, we, we, we do on our podcast. You know, we talking about the uh, current events, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody know what's up. You know, everybody's dealing with it. Everybody's going through it. So things are going to get better. And uh, we as a people united is going to see to that. All right. So now, you know, I took a tip from uh, Snoop Dogg. You know, uh, I, I called him in a television interview and he said, right quick. You know, um, I'm not marching on the street, but I will deal with Black Lives Matter with my platform. Behind the scenes is our platform, and so I'm following the advice of the people who are ahead of me in this game. You know, that's a tip. And then uh, I got a tip from President Obama, you know, as, you know, as far as looking at this situation and figuring out your way through it, you know, to find that answer and pursue that answer, okay? So these are the things that I'm looking at, you know, it's like, it's a difficult world, the whole world is changing. I can't think about these big old concerts no more. Uh, I have to think about what the world is gonna, 
how the world is going to shape this, you know, before I can even do it. So I'm, I'm allowing for uh, the experts to weigh in and give me some advice where I, uh, you know, so I can figure out how I can proceed. Or I think the way most people are today, they much rather be a recording artist. So if they want to be a recording artist, then, you know, that's that's the opportunity I have available for my, you know, my collaborations with West Coast Fast Track and any other project that I collaborate with. So if you just want to be a recording artist, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm a DJ anyway, so so when if I go back to the original roots of DJ Hard, <laughs> all I gotta do is get that beat on wax or something, right? And the concert is going on when I come jam. But you know, hey, for me to come out and risk my life to rock the house, I hope you have something worth my while. You know what I'm saying? When I get, because otherwise, you know, it's going to be available to you at safe distance, which is called piping it in over your social media program, you know, where, where everybody can be safe and still enjoy it. So we're just trying to figure out those kind of party kind of uh, products right now. So this is behind the scene. This is where we figure it out. This is where we're going to make the announcement that this is what we're going to try. So, as I wrap up this show, I want to say thank you very much. This is our platform. This is our medium and our social media issues and platform. If you want to be a plat part of this platform, let me tell you the best way to do it. Leave a comment so the world can see whatever you got to say. Positive, negative, I don't care. You know, it's my job to try to be able to handle this in a nice, decent, sober mind type way. You know, maybe with a little bit of comedy and that's about it. All right, Goldie, what would you like to say before we wrap this show? I would just say let's, uh, let's, let's break the chains uh, through unity. You know, I want to give thanks to our audience, you know, who participated in watching our show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, you know what I'm saying, that, uh, you know, we gave you some nice moments and open your mind to, you know what I'm saying, some, some changeable thoughts. And uh, we'll see you again, you know what I'm saying, next time. Uh, peace. And uh, don't forget to uh, comment. And uh, if you haven't already, if you're not already a subscriber, hey, we need you to subscribe. All right, I'm out. You covered it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Goldie for being part of the show and I want to thank the audience for watching and tuning in with us as we talk about Black Lives Matter and our music projects and film projects. Thank you so much. I'm going to keep it short. Racism is ridiculous. <laughs> Y'all leave a comment now. Come back and please don't drive drunk. <laughs>